This week in Parliament, I explained the background and the lithical heritage of the black bitch. When I tabled an early day motion calling on Green King to think again over its proposed name change of the Black Bitch Tavern. Covid is never far from our thoughts and the increasing spread of the Omicron variant remains a serious concern. So please do get your booster jag when you're given the opportunity. Remain vigilant and keep taking precautions. I was pleased to get my booster at the Pyramids in Bathgate. I was in and out in no time. The UK descent into an undemocratic rogue state continues. Johnson and his charlatans want unfettered power to rule with impunity. With a policing bill that limits the right to protest, an election bill that removes the independence of the Electoral Commission and voter ID which will disenfranchise people, plans to overhaul the Human Rights Act and now a courts bill to eliminate the power of the judiciary to hold the government to account. Had enough of one rule for them and one rule for everyone else? Time for self-rule with independence. We can leave this mess behind and build a new Scotland. The independence campaigning is back up and running. Supporters have been out distributing materials throughout the local area and I've been delighted to work with John McNally MP and his team setting up the Friends of Yes Hub in Falkirk, a brilliant initiative that will act as a cross-party focal point and enhance our movement's capability to campaign digitally going forward over the next vital months. I question ministers on the detrimental impact of Brexit on problems with return from red list countries and over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Since Brexit, the number of EU students studying in the UK universities has fallen, fallen by 56% in Scotland. Several of my constituents have met with difficulties in booking hotel quarantine for the return from South Africa. But the Prime Minister personally told them that the Northern Ireland Protocol was being agreed with a specific intention to renege on it in the future. So how can any trade or negotiating partner in the future trust the UK when it is clearly acting in bad faith? England's Plan B does remarkably resemble the current position in Scotland. Working from home, face coverings, vaccine certificates, all things we have repeatedly advised this government to do. Yep. So it's better late than never, and I can't help but comment that when my colleagues in Scotland were faced with these choices, they got a vote in the Scottish Parliament on them. In debate, I spoke about sickle cell disease and called on the UK to follow Scotland with free prescriptions. In Scotland, we abolished prescription charges in 2011, but in England, the current charge is £9.35 per item. In the votes, I supported amendments to the Armed Forces Bill over the handling of concurrent jurisdiction between the directors of service and public prosecutions. And I oppose the abhorrent nationality and borders bill, which flies in the face of the Refugee Convention and places some of the most vulnerable people at the risk of poverty, exploitation and family separation. As always, do get in touch if you would like an advice surgery appointment. With the increased COVID situations, these are now all back to online or by telephone. And until next week, stay safe.